Welcome to Hale Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hale Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Welcome to it. Great to be with you on a Monday. It's Hale Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Loaded show. Getting you ready for the natty tonight. Georgia, Bama. We will gauge your level of interest. I mean, it's football. It's the final college football you'll get to see. But yes, it's two more SEC teams. Insert party sound effect now. So we'll go there. Big day for uh, one of the best Zach Wiegert, College Football Hall of Famer. That uh, announcement today, Zach Wiegert, old number 72, the pride of Fremont, going to be with us in 25 minutes. Greg Smith uh, shortly to talk recruiting, uh, get his take on Casey Thompson and the Chubba Purdy chase that's going on in hour two. Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, one hour from now. And then a little bit more on Casey Thompson from a guy who's covered him since he was a freshman in high school. Dean Blevins from the well, Souter Insider News Night in Oklahoma City going to be with us. And then we'll dive full into the college football title game tonight. And your NFL playoff schedule is set. He is working double duty. So when you see him, tip your cap and uh, let's put our pool our money together to buy Will Wilson a drink. He is in today. At uh, Willie on the radio on Twitter. How you hanging? I mean, you, you don't ever like outwardly show disdain on your face when you got to come <laughs> into the afternoon. But it's good to see. You. I see you in the morning usually. Yeah, man. Everything is good. I, I got nothing else going on today, so I might as well work. <laughs> well, right? yeah, I might as well yeah. go hang out with Schmidt for two hours. Yeah. Give Will a follow on Twitter at uh, Willie on the radio at Schmidt underscore radio for Chris Schmidt. You can send your emails, Chris at HaleVarsity.com. And uh, also dial us up 466-3776-466-3776-800-825-5865. So a busy day. Things got rocking and rolling in the world of Husker News with an official announcement as uh, Bill Bush is officially your special teams coordinator. He's been your analyst, your defensive analyst for about a year. Uh, When things came together for him to leave LSU and land in Lincoln, that's big time. Bill Bush has been uh, one of the best college football recruiters the last two decades. And uh, you you know that he is going to be able to help out. And you look at this uh, setup Nebraska football has with Bill Bush and Mickey Joseph, uh, a one-two punch that loaded the cupboard for uh, an LSU title run. Uh, Bill Bush knows everybody everywhere. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, In the world of portal, in the world of transfers, Bill Bush is a guy you got to have on your staff on top of the fact the last time he was special teams coach in Lincoln uh, during the Callahan era, his special teams were really, really good. All right? Special teams, kicking, kick return, punting, uh, all that worked out well. Sam Cook uh, was was big time and is still doing it in the NFL. And and Bill Bush has learned uh, he's great in his own right in the world of recruiting, but he's learned from some of the best. And Coach Osborne had an amazing staff of recruiters: Coach Solich, Coach Darlington, Jack Pierce, uh, just to name a few. Ron Brown. So all those dudes had to recruit, and and Bill Bush was a GA uh, in Lincoln from ninety to ninety three. So. He's been hired twice by Nebraska. The press release is, how cool is that? It's real good if you're a Nebraska football fan to have Bill Bush running your special teams. And and listen, what Nebraska football needs in special teams in the Big Ten, some other leagues you can probably get away with having an average special teams unit. In the Big Ten, it will win you two to three ball games. We know what it cost you last year having a, a below average to subpar slash afterthought special teams unit. That's not a diss uh, on, on Coach Dawson. He got kind of handed to him, hey, 
Take care of special teams. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I'll try. Let me handle my outside linebackers as well. And and now you have it dedicated. It's emphasized. And Bill Bush, not only is he going to make whoever's participating in special teams, and you see Mickey Joseph tweeting out over the weekend, my wideouts will play special teams. That was in reference to, to Stanley Morgan doing some work for Cincinnati on special teams. But now Bill Bush is going to emphasize special teams being important, and he will find you talent to go execute. And Scott Frost had mentioned, you know, we don't have a special teams problem. We have a specialist problem. Bill Bush is going to go find guys that can make kicks. (laughs) Bill Bush is going to help put the right guys in position to return kickoffs or punts. And uh, Bill Bush will also bring in some dudes on both sides of the football because of his background. He's been a secondary coach. He's been an outside linebackers coach. And uh, he's also, I don't know, got two first picks overall that have played yeah. quarterback. He brought to Utah and LSU, respectively. So that's pretty big time for Nebraska. And uh, Bush knows the, the Big Ten well, has connections in the East, has connections in the Southeast. You keep him here and you allow him to do his work at a very high level recruiting and coaching up the special teams. No-brainer, but, Will, it's now official. It's funny. You mentioned how he's gotten those two big quarterbacks, and he's a defensive coach. I mean, it's pretty incredible. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting, man. I, you know, I'm 23. Uh, I don't remember him when he was with Nebraska or any of these other stops, but it seems like uh, this is something a lot of people want to done is to get a coach strictly on special teams. I hope it works. If it doesn't, I don't know I don't know what we do next. Where, where do we point our finger next, you know? Well, listen, it comes down to, to getting the right personnel and, and emphasizing, all right, you've got a, a transfer punter. We've talked to him before. And, and listen, the guy has a, a repertoire like he's Raleigh Fingers when it comes to punts. Okay, similar to Sam Cook. Yeah. So he's going to give you the knuckler or the boomerang, right? Go find a guy like that that all he does is do woodworking and punt the football. You'll find a field goal kicker that can can make some kicks. Or better yet, score some touchdowns and don't leave it in the hands of said field goal kicker, right? Yeah, right. So there's there's my take on that. But Bill Bill Bush uh, deserves to be on the staff and in a full-time role and let him go kill it recruiting and coaching for you. So, listen, his, his special teams units were top 25 in 05 and 06, and uh, he's you know, been with Urban Meyer. He's been with a lot of different staffs. He's been with Coach Orgeron, and uh, you've got to you've got to be a, a elite recruiter and coach to be on staff, right? And listen, I I look at the uh, special teams side of things in the Big Ten. Who wins the Big Ten West? It's been Wisconsin. It's been Iowa. It's been Northwestern. Why? <laughs> because they play great defense. They yeah. have a gritty run game. And they aren't giving up busts, let alone kickoff returns. Yeah, they're doing that to us. Yeah, they're not giving up kickoff returns. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, for you were talking about a one-score ball game. How many one-score ball games have factored in a kickoff or punt return mm. against? Yeah, in in the last four years, too many. Yep, too many is the answer. Uh, okay, so there's the Bill Bush news. Let's go to Nebraska basketball. <clears throat> Uh, we'll start with the men uh, before we get to the women. And tomorrow's going to be interesting. You're going to have decent weather. We're down at the single barrel. Uh, real red tip off ahead in Nebraska, Illinois tomorrow. Kofi Coburn uh, comes in. And Illinois not lived up to their hype uh, as, as a top 10 preseason. They're still really good. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, about a year, where the infamous Fred Hoiberg mask spike happened at the end of the game. Thanks, Teddy Buckets. And he had a chance to take down number 10, Illinois, at the time. And guess what? It was a repeat of this year's Ohio State game where you just faded in overtime. Yeah, right. This is disturbing. Uh, Yeah. Okay? You have Fred in his postgame talk about folding and getting it handed to you. And and you can have that conversation, quite honestly, once a tenure. There's been three discussion points of that in just this season. In two weeks, three in, weeks, yeah. In, in three weeks. And, and that is a problem. Obvious problem. 
and it, it's up to the kids in the locker room. And quite honestly, it's going to depend on, on how soon a guy like Trey McGowan's can come back because he won't let that happen. He can coach guys up, talk teammates up from the bench. He's your leader. He's your heartbeat. He's your uh, your backbone on this basketball team, and him being out is not good, clearly, uh, when it comes to the win-loss side. But from a psyche standpoint, I look for tough dudes in that locker room, and I, I it sucks to broad brush, but there's too many guys that when things aren't going well, they say screw it, specifically on the defensive end. And look, I know Rutgers has taken down Purdue, uh, and Rutgers is kind of a, a fringe tournament team right now, and, and they're good. They've got guards. But, my God, it was just it, – it, it was 27-24. Nebraska took a stupid quick shot, and then the league grew, and then it grew, and then the run continued, and there was no even scent of trying to stop transition. And Rutgers may whack you by 20, may, may whack you by 17. I believe Vegas said 7.5 was the number. But that doesn't grow to 30. No. Where in, in, in Nebraska looks much of the same. Threes aren't following, following, falling. And uh, the guy that has the most heart on the team, I, I said McGowan's for sure. Uh, of course, Derek Walker's been a man. Yep. There's no shade at all on him. He's playing his butt off. But his guards need to play like they care. And... You know, Fred Hoiberg was right on the money today saying we need to get Verge going, get him in a good spot. He's not been the same since since break. So get him going, and you don't want him to to be tentative, but you also got to hold him accountable where, listen, if Verge is going to do Verge things versus team things, then you got to sit him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need yeah. better better performance from your stud freshman in Bryce McGowan's. And, and I like how Wiltshire's played. Uh, Kise is, is wearing me out. Good kid. Don't like his body language all the time. Don't like his griping at the officials all the time. And I really hate his defense. And he may be trying, but it still ain't working. Yep. And if he's going to be in, he better be going seven to eight from three. That's right. And he's not. Yep. So maybe that's a lineup switch. Wiltshire is a guy that, I mean, he was hustling. He was hustling on the defensive end. His his three-point shot's coming. I'm hoping we look at maybe a switch in the starting lineup for tomorrow against Illinois. You get, get a little bit, maybe the same offense, but you'll get better defense and a bigger body, a little more length if Wilcher's there. We'll see. <laughs> but Nebraska basketball, the, the fans are like, okay, what, what part of the roller coaster am I on? And... It's it. I'm gonna puke at the end anyway. Yep. But but where am I at? And and right now, Will, you're a big time Nebraska basketball fan. You get this this tease of Michigan State. All right, you're right there against them on the road. Very gallant effort. You you should have had Ohio State. And then you go to Rutgers and just kind of say screw it. Yep. I mean, that's what your defensive effort said. Yeah, you, you can look at the the close losses all you want, but that's not what's sticking out on the national side. I mean, it's year three of Hoiberg. You got people tweeting out his his winning percentage, and it's it's dog crap compared to a lot of people's. <laughs> it's bad, and I don't think that's what a lot of people expected Hoiberg to be doing in year three alone. I mean, Schmitty, I don't know if I'd put this team up against the last two. I think all, they would all be great games. I mean, this team should be better than the last two teams, but, you know, it's close. We're still seeing them go out and just flopping, and, and uh, I'm with you. Yeah, I got to get got to get guys out there. I think Trey coming back will, will help. Um, they'll actually want to fix things when they're losing and not just lay down. No, and that sucks to even throw out there as an accusation or let it creep into your mind because you're not used to seeing it. I mean, you, you saw – it in Nebraska football in, in 2017 against Ohio State where nobody wanted to be out there. And you've just got different agendas. It, when, when, when push comes to shove, this team reverts back to bad shots and poor defense because they don't care as a group. And there's no one that's going to hold other teammates accountable. The guy that would is hurt, can't be on the court right now. And there just needs to be better motivation 
and let's look to a guy. All of their, I shouldn't say all, but you've got a lot of guys on that squad where their motivation is, all right, I, I've left a program to come into a program so I can be the guy or there's this NBA ped- pedigree that's going to help get me to the next level. My, I, I'm doing time here. <laughs> so are the fans. Yeah. I'm right. doing time here. When can I get to the NBA yep. as a as a first round guy or as a fourth year guy that can score the basketball? Or I'm a transfer and I'm a three point specialist. Wiltshire's better and I'm happy for him. You need Lat to get going, right? And and that's been problematic. And then there's Derek Walker who's just been been the beast. He needs right. help. Give him some help. Husker women. Man, they hit a three ball to, to make it 81-79. They had a lead about the six-minute mark fourth quarter yesterday against Iowa. And then Iowa did their thing, uh, showed their experience, hit a ton of shots. Uh, Coach Williams right on where Nebraska's defense was beaten by a way better offense. Nebraska's offense wasn't bad, but you look at the point total, almost 100 mm. put up by Iowa. Nebraska gets a rematch next weekend uh, against Iowa, but... You know, kind of a, a lesson to learn there after the Michigan win. Nebraska came out, battled back, took the lead, but Iowa always had an answer. We'll dive into some football thoughts. Who are some other quarterbacks Nebraska's chasing? Greg Smith next on Hale Varsity. Hello, listener. Hey, it's Chris Schmidt with Hale Varsity Radio, and I wanted to let you know about a special deal just for listeners of the Hale Varsity Radio Show Podcast. We're offering $10 off the annual subscription price of $29.99. That means that you, for less than $20, can get everything we do. 10 issues of our monthly magazine, our annual football yearbook, and all the premium content we produce at HailVarsity.com. Just go to HailVarsity.com backslash subscribe and enter in the promo code GBR for $10 off a full year of Hale Varsity. That's HaleVarsity.com backslash subscribe promo code GBR. And we're back. Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio? On Hale Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes! That's awesome! 15 minutes away, Zach Wiegert, college football. Hall of Famer got that call today as uh, old number 72 going to join us. We'll uh, talk about his time in Lincoln. Greg Smith with us now. Recruiting insider, HaleVarsity.com and Magazine. And Greg and I have some big plans we're uh, spitballing about for the summertime. Mr. Greg, how are you? I am very well. I'm looking forward to just it being summertime. I'll even take spring right now uh, well, based on the, on the cold. It, it'll, it'll feel better tomorrow, I promise. All right. Next couple of days, you'll be like, ah, January, Nebraska, bring every quarterback through. Uh, yeah, I'm trusting you on that. <laughs> at Greg Smith HV on Twitter. Okay, we've got a lot to get to. KC, uh, mighty KC at quarterback now for Nebraska. Uh, what do you like most about KC Thompson? Uh, the experience factor. I like that he's a guy that has started a lot of football games in the Big 12. Um, the veteran quarterback, I think, has, we've kind of gone through this offseason of change for Nebraska, where, especially on offense with so many different moving parts and pieces and guys coming in and out of the transfer portal, new coaches. Um, I think having a guy that's been there, done that in college football at the most important position um, it is really helpful. Skill set-wise, I really like his arm. I like the arm strength, especially considering the, the weapon that Nebraska is continuing to pile up on the outside. Um, being able to push the ball downfield uh, is something that I really am intrigued by. You mentioned the outside. Uh, Trey Palmer is in uh, for Nebraska. A big-time get. Nebraska, I know, didn't have the best recruiting ranking for this class, but they're supplementing quite well, aren't they, in the portal? Yeah, they absolutely are. And that was something that we were kind of like cautioning people about. And it it sounds weird because on one hand, people are so used to kind of the traditional recruiting rankings and kind of how that goes. And I don't think that this year is is a way that Nebraska wants to make a living uh, moving forward. You don't want to have a situation where you're this slowly ranked um, with your traditional class, you know, last in the conference and, and whatnot. But if you are going to be in that situation, you can at least tell that Nebraska pivoted early 
um, and really set their sights on some quality transfer additions. And for the most part, they're landing the guys that they want. Um, and then even a couple of guys like a Trey Palmer that you didn't even necessarily know going into the offseason was going to be somebody that was available to Nebraska. You really needed the Mickey Joseph hire to pull that off. Uh, but a former five-star kid, a guy has also had production in, in the SEC and can be a return guy, which I think is an important piece of this as Nebraska looks to overhaul special teams this offseason, too. Greg Smith is with us, recruiting insider, HailVarsity.com and magazine, at Greg Smith HV on Twitter. What type of one-two punch does Mickey Joseph and Bill Bush give Nebraska, specifically now that Bill is official? Oh, I think it's big for Nebraska. I think that you cannot, you can never have um, enough ace recruiters on your staff, guys that are known for being able to build relationships. And I think it actually, one of the underrated things about this is, is yes, Nebraska gets two really good recruiters, but the way that Nebraska recruits, it allows those guys to really be involved with more guys, right? So Nebraska, if you don't know, um, they recruit by region, right? So it's not just by position where Mickey Joseph is only recruiting wide receivers or Bill Bush would only be recruiting specialists as, as now as a special teams coach. Um, those guys are involved with all sorts of players, um, and so that ends up, I think, really having a nice bonus effect for Nebraska, too. I think it's a really big deal to have both of those guys on the recruiting trail for the Huskers. We're talking to Greg Smith. So, Greg, you know, we're getting a lot of action in the wide receiver room, getting even a quarterback, but the O-line, we're kind of getting some action there, but, I mean, everything, buddy, that we've gotten so far, do you think it's fine? Do you think we could use some more uh, talent out of the portal on the O-line? I definitely think they could use more talent out of the portal on the offensive line, um, and I think they're going to get more. Um, I think that a guy like uh, East uh, Tennessee State University transfer guy, Tremont Shorts, I think is going to be in for an official visit this weekend. Um, and Nebraska is in a pretty good spot with him right now. I think he's six four, three hundred, got a lot of experience down there. Um, and so I definitely think they'll continue to shake up that offensive line room. And if they get a guy like Shorts, um, that's three guys that can complete, compete for playing time that have come into the team this offseason, um, and I, I think that's doing pretty good on the offensive line. It does feel like it's been a lot of skill position players, but they've definitely addressed that line, too. Greg, let's talk about uh, another quarterback, Chubba Pretty from uh, Florida State. Uh, of course, he's a long-term guy. you got the immediate need with Casey Thompson. What's your gut tell you here on a Monday? I know OU recently offered. We'll talk to Dean Blevins in an hour. I think he might be a backup guy for OU, as in all right, if, if guys we like better fall through, maybe we'll go after, after you, Chubba. Who knows with the portal? But uh, what's your feel now with Pretty? Uh, is, is the 14th still, uh, well, in ink, or is it turned into pencil for that visit to Nebraska? First of all, I need you to cut the drop right there of you saying who knows with the portal because I feel like that could be used at any time uh, <laughs> given everything that's going on. But – um, I, I would put that visit in pencil, but I would have had it in pencil before kind of the Oklahoma news just because that's kind of the, the cherry on top of the Sunday for Nebraska to be able to then bring in Purdy on top of Landon Casey Thompson when you already have a couple of young quarterbacks on the roster. Um, I think Nebraska is definitely still trying to get him here for that visit, and it is still on as of right now as far as I know. Um, but I do think that Oklahoma makes this a little interesting. But to me, the thing is, is I don't think that this is a situation where like, oh, you is offering him you know a guaranteed starting spot or anything like that I think that either way he's going to have to probably come in and at best compete for the spot and probably be in a situation where he's a long-term option behind a shorter term veteran either Dylan Gabriel at OU um, or Casey Thompson at Nebraska so it really could come down to which relationships he has um, with the different coaching staff. Greg uh, some names here with the running back coach coaching front TCU's Brian Applewhite. You have Florida's Greg Knox. Do you have a lean right now on either of those guys fill, filling out Coach Frost's staff? Um, it's been pretty quiet on that. I, I think that those are the uh, two, I guess, would have been leading candidates here recently, the names that I had heard most. Um, I think that still you could probably, now that we've gotten to this point, keep an eye on some NFL guys. Now that you're getting Black Monday um, and you're seeing all sorts of coaching staffs being shaken up at the NFL level. Um, so that wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, but it's, it's been kind of quiet on what's happening with the running backs front, which, which is kind of interesting because I just feel like Nebraska and their running backs coach situation, there should always be kind of a spotlight on that. 
Um, and we just we just haven't heard all that much about it. Yeah, I was going to ask, Greg, speaking of the running back room, I remember a few weeks ago, Chavante Citizen was a big name that Nebraska offered. Is there any d- update uh, with him? Yeah, I think I think Nebraska wants to get him on campus sometime this month. If Nebraska is going to have any shot of pulling this off, uh, they need to get him up here, whether or not it's an unofficial visit or an official. Obviously, he'd love to have the official uh, to do the full red carpet treatment. Uh, but I think Nebraska would be an intriguing spot for him just because he knows that he'd be able to come in and play pretty early. Uh, the relationship with Mickey Joseph is strong, but then this is also where you're going to need a running backs coach to help push that over the top. And that's what could really make this interesting, depending on which way Nebraska goes so I, I don't i wouldn't give nebraska a great shot at landing citizen uh but at least they're in the fight what do you feel about deandre jackson atm uh is known for uh, lots of oil money and uh gigging them but in all in all reality a and m's also had some pretty sweet running backs uh but jackson is no longer there he's a stone mountain georgia kid that is sean beckton's backyard could that connection work out for Nebraska? Yeah, I think that that's one that, that you can keep an eye on as well. I do think that Nebraska, whether it's you know, the home run with Citizen, whether it's uh, you know, Jackson out of the transfer portal is someone else, I do think that there's going to be another um, running back added to this group. Cause you just have it, even though it's a young group with potential, there just isn't anyone that, that really is, has be, shown himself to be the guy. Um, I like Jackson as a bigger back. Um, it's an interesting option, you know, once you start you know, pounding the rock in the Big Ten. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. But I definitely think Nebraska is going to look to add another running back here. Defensive line spot, you have Neste, Jade, Silvera, Miami defensive lineman. He's in the portal, one year to play ball, 41 games, plenty of experience. Nebraska, it's not easy to reload uh, when DeAndre Thomas and, and, and D-Boogie move on. Where would Nebraska's connection to Silvera be, uh, the, the Miami uh, portal D-tackle? Yeah, I think that that one would be a Travis Fisher fine uh, because that's Travis Fisher's area down there in Miami. Um, and I think that the, the, he's a really good player and a guy that has a lot of experience. We started off talking about Casey Thompson being a guy that you can kind of plug in as someone that you feel good about with the experience. He would be the same way on the defensive line. Um, you like you know guys like Nash Hutmacher and others coming up uh, down the pipe, uh, but you'd like to be able to slide a guy in. I think that this is also kind of a situation where Nebraska, and the guy's name is escaping me, I forget, me, uh, but he was transferring from Washington, um, and he ended up at Oregon with Tony Tuioti. I think Nebraska had really good intentions with that kid um, and thought that they were going to land him, but Tuioti goes to Oregon and gets him, so I think that this kid from Miami would be a nice, uh, not even a backup plan, he'd be a good player uh, for that situation. No, it'd be good, and uh, Tiamani, correct? Is that who you're thinking yes, of for that, Oregon? that's who I'm thinking of, thank you. No, yeah, Tiamani was like all love in Nebraska, and then uh, Coach T <laughs> went out to <laughs> Nike land, man. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Phil, right? Yeah. Greg, all right, get your crystal ball out before we say goodbye. From recruiting to the NFL, what what needs to happen with your Bears here? So we're talking to Greg Smith, happy fan of said playoff team a year <laughs> from now. Yeah, this is, man, this is tough. And, and I, I go back and forth because on one hand, and it's the Bears, you need a coach that understands defense and that kind of embodies the city and all of that, right? But on the other hand, you've got a potential franchise quarterback in Justin Fields uh, that you need to develop. So I'm going to say you go ahead and try uh, to go down to Kansas City to land a barbecue uh, and get Eric <laughs> the enemy. I'll, I'll take that. And then take like the, one of those Bucks assistant GMs because they've been doing great work down there, um, you know, save for the Antonio. Antonio Brown situation. Sure. Well, and that's that's no one's fault, man. <laughs> it's just Antonio. Right? I mean, uh, you know, our old buddy Danny Burke is is tweeting out some info here about the McCaskies thinking about Bill Polian. I mean, he's a kind of the architect for those Cleveland teams that didn't last and, and got rid of Saban and, and Belichick and but man, they were well they, they worked well together. Uh, Polian did. Is that an option? I know front office guys are front office. It'd be a lot easier if your head coach's bud could just, and I got about 20 seconds, could just, like Bill Pars says, Bill Parcells said, just pick the groceries. Because you always have this GM front office take, and then you have the coach, and you have the GM picking the players, and the coach has got to win with them. And that doesn't always work out. 
No, I want to, yeah, I definitely want separation. Like, I don't want them going for the big hire that they need to also give GM control to. No, I, I like separation in those situations, too. All right. Greg, pick out some barbecue and get your grill dusted off for tomorrow. That <laughs> sounds like a plan, man. Thanks for having me. There he is. Greg Smith with us, recruiting insider. Busy weekend for the Big Red. Lots of visitors. Uh, a man who uh, came on down from Fremont, won a national title, and now is a college football Hall of Famer, Zach Wiegert, next on Hale Varsity, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Hello, listener. This is Brandon Vogel, managing editor of Hale Varsity, and I wanted to let you know about a special deal just for listeners of the Hale Varsity Radio Show podcast. We're offering $10 off the annual subscription price of $29.99. That means that you, for less than $20, get everything we produce 10 issues of our monthly magazine our annual football yearbook and all of the premium content we produce at hailvarsity.com just go to hailvarsity.com slash subscribe and enter the promo code gbr for ten dollars off a full year of hail varsity that's hailvarsity.com slash subscribe promo code gbr And now, and now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Back into it, it's Hail Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery and uh, one of the leaders of the pipeline, an All-American, a Nebraska Hall of Famer, now a college football Hall of Famer for the 2022 class, uh, Zach Wiegert with us. Zach, good to speak with you again. It's been a while, I think pre-Boulder. A great day for you. Congratulations on the College Football Hall of Fame. How do you feel? Oh, it's a great day. Um, you know, it's uh, you know you go on, you go on after college and you, you play play some ball and work and you don't really think about it and then you know you get a call and and you get in and then you start reflecting back to all the all the great times and great players you played with and you know I always have told my other linemen I'll mention them by name every time something like this happens. So Brennan Stye. Aaron Graham, Joel Wilkes, and Rob Zatica, this is as much a testament to them because you don't win stuff like this as an individual playing offensive line. So. You've always been one to kind of share the glory. You guys were an amazing unit, the standard in Nebraska football. And I want to go back to, to when you got to campus in 91. Was it an immediate chemistry with, with that crew, with the pipeline? Or did you guys have to kind of warm up to one another? You know, it was interesting. Um, you know, I had been around down there some just because my brother was playing. So right. I'd go down there, and I, I knew quite a bit of the, the upper class. And just, you know, my brother was three years ahead of me. And, uh, you know, you get guys like um, Brendan. And, you know, Brendan and Joel and Robin us were all in the same class. Um, and so it was pretty much, you know, immediate. Uh, you know, I would say uh, that first year and really the summer between our first and second year, where you know I, we just kind of found out that everyone everything was a competition in our class and uh no one liked to lose anything in our class and uh you know it just it really just got <laughs> it just kept growing year after year it got more competitive and, and uh you know i don't know how the other classes were uh before or after us as much but um you know it was it, everything was a competition with us and i think that that really helped us because uh you know, no one ever wanted to be the weak link of anything, that's for sure. Zach Wiegers with us, Sale Varsity Radio, College Football Hall of Fame 2022. Zach, part of the class, got the call. And uh, you mentioned the pipeline. And who did you make better day after day, squaring off against that black shirt defense? And who made you better? I mean, a lot of great defensive linemen, a lot of great offensive linemen. Yeah, you guys complimented one another. Yeah, there was a lot, a lot of them, and uh, you know, I played next to Will Shield for two years, and I think we both complemented each other really well. And then mm-hmm. I was fortunate to play next to Brendan for two years. But you know, on the other side of the ball, you know, you had Trev Alberts, uh, John Perella, um, Dwayne Harris, Dante Jones. I mean, you name it. I mean, there was Terry Keneally. Um, I mean, I can maybe a laundry list of names that most of the fans of your show would know mm-hmm. that you know that I went against on a daily basis. And uh, you know, it was always a good feeling when you show up on a Saturday to play, and you felt like the guys you're playing against were as tough as the guys you practice against. Toughness was a compliment given to you by so many of your peers, so many of your coaches. Was that something you always had, or did it kind of get refined as you you grew older? Well, uh, I'd like to think I could control it better as I got older, but uh, it was, 
I think that's kind of what made us unique is we always, as a group, we kind of always talk like, you know, the offensive linemen are supposed to be the protectors and the defensive line, the guys are the aggressors. And, and we always said, well, why can't we be the aggressors? And um, I, I think hopefully, and the, and the film knows and the fans know, hopefully our play showed that. That's how we win in the games is we just, we just want to be more physical and tougher than everyone played against. Well, you guys did that. Zach Wiegert's with us on Hale Varsity Radio. First place Heisman vote. You finished ninth. Do you know who gave you the first place vote in 94? <laughs> no, I don't. I should buy them dinner or something. I wish they, if they listen to your show, I wish they'd give me a call. I owe them because I've heard that a couple of times, and and I, and I appreciate it. I don't I know. There's an offensive line with no stats is going to be a pretty hard sell, but uh, I would say that uh, – um, if you watch this game tonight, it gets won on the offensive and defensive line. And I think everybody knows that. So, but uh, yeah, no, that was I remember. I remember hearing that back in the day. But it's, uh, it was an honor that someone thought I should have won the Heisman Trophy for sure. Well, you guys uh, on the line need the credit, right? And well, you had the pancake stat. You had the you never allowed any sacks stat. But I want to get into the Sunday morning pancake feed. I mean, what was the record? <laughs> Uh, with with the pipeline group, who took down the most pancakes with milk? Uh, you know, I, I don't remember. I think it was a toss up every year. Everyone eat till they were sick. But uh, <laughs> man, we could eat a lot of food back then. I mean, I remember we did some photos that people can probably dig up from somewhere, and we had a, a stack of pancakes in front of us that was you know three foot tall. And, and I have to say that that whole thing about went down, which is kind of scary to think, but. Um, yeah, we, we used to burn quite a few calories back in the day. <laughs> Zach, uh, there's there's footage out there of of the Orange Bowl, and there's been quite a bit on on Twitter with the, the national title game tonight, and there's different clips of different title games being shown. Of course, the Fiesta Bowl win over Florida, the win uh, by you guys against the U and Warren Sapp in Miami, uh, the, the heartbreak against Florida State the year before. And I remember watching the game, uh, and, and you're on the sideline. Defense is out there kind of piling away at, at cost in Miami, and you're sitting there talking with Trev Alberts on the sideline. What were you guys talking about then? Do you remember? Yeah, no, I, I don't remember the exact situation, but, you know, it was one of those things where, yeah, yeah, things happen in a game and it's just unfortunate you had some turnovers and things like that. And mm-hmm. it was just a conversation of like, you know, that we're going to get them, you know, where, you know, you just know, you just felt like it was that we were going to get it done. And the same thing with junior year, you know, I mean, we just, we, we just had a mentality that we could beat anyone we played against the last couple of years I was there. And, um, I don't remember ever having a negative conversation on the sideline of ever anyone thinking we weren't going to win any game we played which is, you know, that's half a win in his belief, right? It, it is. And was there a tipping point moment in your career in Nebraska where, all right, um, we we can believe, but now we kind of showed it. Was there a game that you point to? I think it was actually my um, my sophomore year. We played Miami, a really good Miami team in the bowl game. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it was Florida State. It was Florida State. We played them twice back to back. And it was one of those things is the you know the, my freshman year we played uh, the Miami team and we played Florida State and I just felt like from that one year to the next year that we just seemed so much faster and we we seemed like we were an aggressor and and things were starting to change mm-hmm. and as we were coming to be in to be juniors my year where Trevor was a senior you could really you could really feel the difference of just like how much faster practices felt and. Um, you know, how much more confidence everyone had. And, you know, we had like two or three years back to back to back, not, not like a single player on the entire team missed one workout. So you could just see the level of dedication and the level of talent just keep growing. Zach Weger. I would say that was probably it. It was probably that bowl game my sophomore year. Good stuff from Zach Weger. A few more minutes with Zach Weger as we round out hour one. And uh, Zach, of course, getting the Hall of Fame call today, uh, the College Football Hall of Fame, saying, Zach, come on down for the class of 2022. Uh, great part of that offensive line, uh, unanimous All-American Offensive Lineman of the Year. And uh, he still smiles about that first place 
Heisman vote he got, but uh, really cool. And, and I think Nebraska fans remember that footage. There's Zach on the sideline. There's Trev Alberts in street clothes because he'd graduated. He was playing for the Colts at the time, and they're both just kind of smiling about the moment. More with Zach Wieger. His Hall of Fame day continues with Hale Varsity. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Zach Wieger's with us. Sorry to interrupt, Zach, but a Hall of Fame call for you for the College Football Hall of Fame 2022. Uh, get your thoughts before we say goodbye, Zach, and thanks again for a few minutes on your big day. Um, you look at, at Trev Alberts, now AD Trev. Uh, you've been close with Trev. Thoughts on, on where he's at with this program. And, and then also you look at Nebraska as they, they look towards 2022. How are you feeling about Nebraska football? Well, Trev, Trev's a winner. I've been around him for – I've known him for years and years. And Trev's a winner, and they, they couldn't have picked a better one to lead. To lead. Um, he knows how to get it done for sure. Um, I, I think with him, you, you know – in that position and with Scott where he's at, I think that, uh, you know, they'll get the right people and players in place to continue to, to, to grow the program. Um, like I said, I, I just have been around Trev too long to, to I just know he's, uh, he'll do work tirelessly to, to bring back winning to Nebraska. I know that means as much to, to him as it does to me and a lot of ex players. So. Do you down for quite a few games or what do you, how do you spend your Saturdays? Yeah, no, I go to most games. Uh, I probably make, you know, 75, 80% of the home games and usually try to catch a couple away games every year. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I've, I've got lots of tickets. So I'm a, I'm a big supporter. Good work. Uh, Zach Weger with us. Zach, uh, congrats on the Hall of Fame call. And uh, we'll do this again. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Take care. Zach Weger, good to hear from him. And uh, nice of him to get back to me. Got the email that he was part of the college football hall of fame in 2022 we had a chance to chat it had been a little while we talked to him uh, the week before nebraska went out to boulder uh, back in 19 and tried to keep in contact with him but growing up uh, watching that unit that offensive line and and group uh, the pipeline with sty and wiegert and zadiska and of course um, aaron graham at center Joe Wilkes, uh, phenomenal as well. All those dudes just wailed away on a really good defensive line every day in practice, uh, made one another better, and then also kind of paid it forward to the next group of linemen behind them that ended up playing at at just an obscenely high level on both sides of the football. Kind of sounds like we're talking about Alabama. Well, 25, 30 years, 35 years ago, that's what Nebraska had rolling with uh, draft pick upon draft pick that had talent, but also they got manufactured, man. There was a just a boatload of development to go with the talent. Uh, we'll see <laughs> that on hand tonight, and uh, we'll get some thoughts on Bama, Georgia coming up. Uh, a guy that's been really close to Coach Saban through his career is Charlie McBride. We talked to Coach on Friday. Uh, just because I was uh, taking a bit of a breather. So we talked with Coach Friday. We'll, we'll get him back on the horn here in about 10 minutes or so. His preview of Georgia and Alabama, his thought on Bill Bush uh, joining the staff full-time as special teams coordinator. And, of course, uh, Charlie will have something nice, maybe a little ornery to say about Zach Wiegert. Uh He'll say it lovingly, though. Dean Blevins uh, has known... Casey Thompson, since he's a freshman, covered him in Oklahoma uh, as a high school player. And, of course, his dad, Charles, will check in with uh, Sooner Insider Dean Blevins, see if he's still all over Lincoln Riley. My bet is yes. Reminder about substitutions during the game. Coaches uh, get the best player on the field. Getting behind the wheel after drinking also demands a substitution. Sober drivers are the only choice. The DUI costs more than you think a message from the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. Hour 2, Coach McBride next. Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to save you some money. Hey, it's Chris Schmidt. 
with Hale Varsity. And I wanted to offer listeners of this podcast $10 off the price of an annual subscription. That means that you, for less than $20, can get everything we produce. Ten issues of our monthly magazine, our annual football yearbook, and all the premium content we produce at HaleVarsity.com. Just go to HaleVarsity.com backslash subscribe and enter in the promo code GBR for $10 off a full year of Hale Varsity. That's HaleVarsity.com backslash subscribe promo code GBR welcome to hail varsity radio the voice of Husker Nation insight opinion expertise with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state join the show on Twitter at hail varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio call in at 402 466 ESPN or 1-800-825-5865 here's Chris Schmitz Welcome to it. It's Hour 2. It's Hale Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt and Will Wilson with us. Uh, we're working on Coach McBride. Get him on the horn. His take on the national title game tonight. Georgia, Alabama, how you feeling about it? Do you care? I think you'll watch. But I think your excitement level is so-so. Uh, that's, uh, that's the truth about it because it's going to be a, a three and a half hour SEC infomercial. If we want to get real technical about it, since he should have played Michigan, Bama should have played Georgia in the semis. That's not how it went down. Let's talk to a guy who's got a few national title rings. We welcome in Mr. Blackshirt himself, Charlie McBride, a Monday with Charlie. Coach, long time, no talk. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm freezing. Are you? Well, hey, uh, we, uh, it's better to give than receive. So we sent some of that uh, garbage weather from the weekend. You. Yeah, up your way. But it'll be 55 tomorrow here and uh, mid 50s the next couple, three days. So maybe that's headed your way as well. I'll do the best I can. Okay. <laughs> do that. I want to start off and get your thoughts. It was officially announced today that Bill Bush is on staff for Nebraska. He's been a, a, a defensive analyst, but now he's been named special teams coach. What are your thoughts on, on Bill uh, being back full-time with the Big Red? Listen, Bill was a graduate assistant for us and probably one that, you know, it's, sometimes they just go through there and you don't even re- remember who they are. But Bill was always a guy that, were, I mean, a real worker. I mean, a guy that put his mind to things and, He's a he's a very very good recruiter, and um, you know so I think that's number one. And and to have be in the special teams now, you know he's done both. He's worked on special teams, worked in the secondary, and things like that. So um, I've seen him talk at clinics uh, out in Arizona when I was out there. He came and spoke at clinics out there. And uh, was when he was at Utah State primarily, and uh, Bill is a good person and a you know and a real he's a real football coach. He's I mean he's he's a worker and uh, he'll be a real plus. Coach, let's spend some time on his eye for talent because you aren't a kidding when it comes to to his recruiting reputation. Some of the guys he's worked for. Are are impressive. Obviously, you and Coach Osborne and the '90 staff uh, speaks for itself. But even after his time as a GA, he was with with Coach Alvarez at Wisconsin, and then you know he was a pretty early hire in his career to, to Urban Meyer. Well, I think you know the thing with him is is that he's a, he's a very resourceful guy. He's a he's the kind of guy that it. it he finds out how to do things. I mean, in other words, he comes up with ideas. You know, it's not, it's not, he's, he listens to people, which is one of his great assets, Mm -hmm. but he, he figures things out that are different a lot of times. And that's what I always liked about him because he'd always come in with something that, wow, you know, that's, that's a good idea. And, you know, you get that kind of impression from him, but, He's a guy that, you know, I remember him talking to clinics and he talked about all kinds of things about you know, playing defense and how to get the ball out and how you, you know, different techniques he used to tear the ball out of there. And, 
you know, things like that. But I think that he'll he'll know he'll know exactly what to do. And I'm being with Barry's probably a great thing for him on the recruiting trail. I mean, that's a real plus going and being around him because he was always a good recruiter. I recruited against him when he was at Iowa, and we were good friends, and we'd always talk and spend some time together. And uh, but uh, yeah, but I'm sure that being around people like like Barry is going to be a be a real plus for him. Nebraska does what you guys did, and that's every everyone's got a region. So if if there's a a, a safety or a quarterback or, or pick a position in your region, you'll uh, you'll get alerted to it. It seems like Bill Bush ha- has been in a lot of regions. <laughs> That's you know either either <laughs> either being with Rutgers or being with you know Ohio State or being with Wisconsin or being with Urban at Utah or down at Arizona. And then there's LSU and Coach Orgeron, right? I mean, there, there's not a region he doesn't know. Well, that's what I, that's what I mean. You can put him anywhere you want because he's – the thing is, is he probably knows a lot of high school coaches, which is really important because mm-hmm. when you make a phone call to a guy and you're a high school coach and you know who you're talking to, it makes a big, big difference. And um, – I know because I recruited Chicago and knew about everybody that was in there, uh, except for some of the really young coaches. But I got to know them quick because you go there right away. And in fact, I had <clears throat> one of my friends that was the head coach at Michigan State called me, and had, he had a young coach. He said, "You mind if he uh, he doesn't know Chicago? Would you take him with you?" And I said, "Sure, I'll take him with me." He goes, so he went right with me to the schools. We recruited the same guys and. You know, and that's that's just part of the deal. I mean, a lot of coaches would probably not really go for that trick, but no. um, it all worked out really good. I got all the players, and he came in second. <laughs> well, it's only courtesy, right? Charlie McBride's with us on Hale Varsity Radio on Monday with Charlie. Coach, uh, I want to get a thought from you on Zach Wiegert. He got the announcement today. We just got done talking to him. Uh, and uh, Zach is now a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. He's okay. been a Nebraska Hall of Famer for uh, a lot of years, but now the national chapter, uh, you know, I think it's down in Atlanta. It used to be in South Bend. What do you remember about Zach? Oh, I remember a lot about him. I mean, he, he, he was one of the guys that we learned a lot from going against him, you know, in, 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 uh, in practice and things one-on-one pass rush and, He's tough now. I mean, you know, he's he, he was if you could beat him then you did something. You know, and he he ended up being a pretty high draft choice and a guy that um you know, spent some time in the NFL. I I remember I coached the offensive line so a lot of times I could talk to him about a few things. Mm-hmm. You know, here and there, you know, on the way out the door after we went one on one that I saw, you know, and um so, you know, he was but his brother and him were like glue, and uh, they they just you know really really did a lot for our program. I mean, Zach was the kind of guy that would get down in his stance in a game, and he'd tell the guy across the way that we're going to run it right here at you, and that that's what that's what they were doing. And then he'd say, "We're going to do that one again." <laughs> I mean. He was one of those kind of guys. I mean, he just had so much confidence in what he was doing that, uh, you know, it was amazing. And I think that spread over into what he's doing now with his, with his business and mm-hmm. everything else. And he, he's got a great personality. He was a lot of fun to talk to, and, and he really is as confident as he was. And I remember him telling me the story about they were playing, you guys were playing Texas Tech, and he was just – he had he'd had enough of Texas Tech's defensive lineman's mouth, and it was halfway through the first quarter. And he's, you know, we're going to sick Lawrence on you, and we're just going to keep running right at you. And uh, you guys did to the tune of you know sixty plus points. And he had a good time letting folks know where the ball was going. But he really, I mean, he he was a pretty fierce competitor 
And oh. and that was I think that's what what kind of wound his clock, so to speak. He just loved to win. Yeah, he, well, that's that's what he was, and and you know it wasn't hard to tell. You know, he he went to a smaller high school. I think he went to Bergen up in Wahoo, even I, you know, and uh, he he was just a he was just tough all the time that I saw him. I mean, I remember another guy kind of like him was a kid that was a defensive lineman was Kevin Raymakers. No, no you know, he'd kid. Not, he, yeah, he would, he'd knock your clock off for a nickel. And, um, <laughs> you know, they were both the same kind and uh, same kind of guys. And, you know, you love them as football players and everything. And the only thing I could tell you that was probably negative about Zach was he didn't do so good in German. Hold on a minute. I wish I'd have known this about 30 minutes ago. What happened in German? I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but he took German a couple times. <laughs> and he's a German. He was so mad. He was madder than, you know. <laughs> He'd have to tell you how many times he took it, but I'll just say a couple. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. You don't have to go any, any further. He just said, oh, he took German twice. <laughs> Well, he, I think, that's so good. I think I think that I think that oh, Zach, I think he got mad after two times, so he said, "The heck with it! I'm going to try it a third just to show him what to do." <laughs> but wow. I mean, yeah, he was he was something else. But I mean, and you know, Coach Coach Tenniper loved the guy. He, he, talk about a good leader. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I mean, he he just you know, and he was he's a carefree guy. He's a you know a guy that. Uh, you know, had fun. He had fun playing, and uh, you know, and, and he really kept that offensive line together. Well, uh, a great unit, uh, and guys that really grinded away to uh, to work together. Charlie McBride with us on Monday with Charlie Hale of Our City Radio. We're talking about Zach Weger. The Zach Weger interviews posted up on our on demand section, ESPNLincoln dot com. Coach, going to switch gears, talk about Bama and Georgia tonight. And you've spent a lot of your coaching uh-huh. career helping others. You just talked about taking a, uh, a new coach through Chicago that you ended up recruiting against. Another coach that reached out to you in his career while at Michigan State was Nick Saban. And you you uh, you go back quite a few years with Nick, don't you? Yeah, well... I got I got to know Nick probably mainly because I I did play for Michigan State guys and I spent some time up there and Nick Nick was a, really a good defensive coach. I mean and and of course then he went on he was uh, last I re- he was the coordinator of the Cleveland Browns and went he's been around the NFL a few times and he's figured out all the different ways and he's a guy that remembers everything and um, you know a lot of guys. Uh, have a tough time doing that. Yeah. You know, he, he everything was stored, and he could remember stuff that was, you know, and that was just, you know, that I, you know, I I think that's really a, a valuable asset because every coach that you're with, and every, even every assistant coach that you're with, you learn something from. And he wasn't afraid. Uh, you know, he he didn't act like he was the big cheese all the time when he was younger. I don't know how. You know, I haven't worked with him, but you know, he would he would uh, as a as a coach, he would always listen. I mean, he was a guy that if he if he you told him something that was going to be valuable to him, that he mm-hmm. thought he'd ask you to explain that again or do it again, and um, so he was he was learning all, and I think he still is. And that's why I think he's such a good coach. As it's just like a doctor. If a doctor goes to school and then gets out and doesn't study all the things, as, uh, the improvements made, and just, uh, vice versa, he's probably isn't a very good doctor. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's always trying to learn. I mean, he's like he just got out of school. <laughs> coach, did he, did he ask to know how you guys did it? I mean, was that part of his... His outreach to you guys, what what you guys had built. Yeah, it, well, a lot of times it was a lot of times it was you know, it would, he would ask about practice. How did we practice? How did we you know do this? And how did we get time to do this? And how you know to get time to do that? And I remember, 
one of the things that, that I always told them that I thought and I believed into the end because it happened to me a couple of times when I went to, you know, different places was we'd get 10 or 15 minutes of group work. Mm-hmm. And my whole question is, how in the world am I going to be able to teach a kid to do the things that has to be done on the field during a game in 15 minutes a day? You know, and, you know, and I, I, when I came to Nebraska, I had, we, we had to fit in with the offensive number of times. Mm-hmm. We stopped that deal because I said that isn't going to happen. And so we got more time in individual work, and it worked out – a lot better with you get more time to teach kids more repetitions on different blocking schemes and so on and so forth and um, we end up being able to work things out a lot better and, and fit it all in together and you know but he's one of those guys that you know would would call and ask ask about a certain you know he'd ask about a coverage that so and so ran or something that, you know and you know, how would we play this blocking scheme or how would we do this, you know? And, and those are the kind of things we, when you know a guy, they usually, you know, feel confident. And a lot of guys are embarrassed to call you that I that they don't know it. Mm-hmm. They, that's that's not the right thing to, to attack. If you think you know everything, you're probably going to get yourself in trouble. Charlie McBride, coach, about 10 seconds here before we talk again. Georgia or Alabama tonight? Who wins? Well, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm I hope I, I'd like to see Nick win, but I'll tell you, it's going to be tough because I think he's beaten Georgia three or four times in a row, and that doesn't happen too often. And to win, you know, to beat him, but uh, he better get ready to play tonight. Yeah, I, I think, think so. Coach, have a great week. Warm up, and we'll talk again Monday. Okay, good. <laughs> Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to save you some money. I'm Brandon Vogel, Managing Editor of Hale Varsity, and I wanted to offer listeners of this podcast $10 off the price of an annual subscription. That means that you, for less than $20, can get everything we produce, 10 issues of our monthly magazine, our annual football yearbook, and all of the premium content we produce at HaleVarsity.com. Just go to HaleVarsity.com slash subscribe and enter the promo code GBR for $10 off a full year of Hale Varsity. That's hailvarsity.com slash subscribe, promo code GBR. And now, and now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Back into it, it's Hail Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Some more quarterback talk, so let's check in with a uh, standout quarterback for Oklahoma, sports director for News 9 in Oklahoma City and the sports animal. Dean Blevins back with us, at Dean Blevins on Twitter. Dean, how's, uh, well, air quote, the off season going, bud? What do you know? Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm your listeners, um, I may, no, I don't go to another channel. I just maybe listen to me for some entertainment because if you remember <laughs> when we talked, uh, we've talked a lot since August, but when we talked in August, we were talking uh, national championship, Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams backing up, Spencer Radler, Heisman favorite, number one going in, number one projected uh, draft pick, da 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 I did say at that time that, uh, nothing happens with the Sooners in terms of making a chase unless they play great defense. As it turns out, they did not play great defense, and Lincoln Riley's heart wasn't in it. And he has he has overhauled, dismantled the Oklahoma football program like no person I've ever seen in the history uh, of the program. But I know we're here to talk about Nebraska and quarterbacks and KC, uh, so let's go. I wanted to get your, your thoughts on – on Casey Thompson, you know Charles well, you know Casey well, being an Oklahoma City kid and watching him shoot out with with Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry this year. And tell me a little bit about uh, about Casey and and what Nebraska is getting. I'm very impressed with what I've seen from him, but you know him pretty well. Well, you start with the character of a young man, and the older I get, the more important I, I see that being, and a leadership quality that the team down here didn't have all year and. I don't know how Nebraska's been led, but you got to have team leaders, and he's a team leader. He was a team leader when he was back up on the bench, you know, stuck away forever watching um, as, as the backup, mm-hmm. and then finally got his shot. But he's a high-character guy, 
supremely athletic. He burst on the scene as a ninth grader, sophomore, and you knew that he was going to be special. Um, he is a marvelous athlete. He has really good speed. He makes good decisions. Um, he has gotten much better throwing the football, where I, I consider it a strength of his right now. I mean, uh, some of the numbers he put up were, were just outstanding. He was on a losing football team, and that never helps. But he, he really he really kind of brings everything you, you, you look for. Um, is he going to win the Heisman? Uh, no, but is he going to win a whole lot of football games, uh, in my opinion? Uh, yes, and plenty good to do that, not only because of the ability, but those other things that I mentioned. Leadership is something that, that people spend time really commenting on, and then you, you get that leadership quality at the position. You've got to have it in quarterback, and then you have some some talent. Coach Frost's offense, you got to be quick. you got to get rid of the football. That didn't always happen with Adrian, and that wasn't all Adrian's fault. It, it looks like Casey's really good under duress. And what stuck out to you about him in that Oklahoma-Texas shootout this year? Well, I mean, he, he was throwing dimes, and he was making good decisions. Um, and he had B. John back there in the backfield that uh, is a Heisman candidate again this year that uh, was a great one-two punch. He didn't have the greatest receivers in the world, but he just lit up Oklahoma. Um, you know, I, I, just, I, just look at, I just look at a guy like that and say that I want to go to battle with him. Now, I watched Adrian Martinez play virtually every game uh, at Nebraska, and what a fine guy he apparently is and, and was really a good player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I expect more from Casey Thompson, and I expect him to be the quarterback. He, he was looking at Oklahoma. Oklahoma didn't guarantee uh, – uh, he, he felt more – I talked to him the night before he committed, and it was Oklahoma, Texas – excuse me, Oklahoma, Nebraska. And I'll just say that he felt more comfortable about his playing situation uh, at Nebraska. So I think he made a wise choice. Would have loved to have seen him down here. But uh, I really do believe he's going to play better than Martinez and, and win quite a bit more games. Casey doesn't seem as turnover prone. Uh, Adrian just had that bugaboo. I hope Adrian yeah. does well down at K-State. You guys will get to see him again next year. But uh, not that Casey was perfect, but it seems like he was better taking care of the football. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. And I think you get better and better in that as you go, as you learn how important that is to, to winning and losing. But, uh, you know, he, he's bringing experience in there. He's bringing health in there. I know I sound like an agent for him, but um, <laughs> I really wanted him to come here and thought that he might be the starting quarterback if he came and competed against Dylan Gabriel, who uh, Oklahoma snatched up immediately. Um, so, I mean, I, I think I think the world of him, you don't go down to Texas and start. Um, when they don't want to start you, they wanted to start Hudson Card. The old staff and anyone that they would listen to, Sark and company, said that Hudson Carb was the, the next coming of uh, James Street hmm. or John Elway. And so Casey just flat beat him out. A-plus from this end. Dean Blevins with us, News 9, Oklahoma City Sooner Insider. At Dean Blevins on Twitter, his insight, uh, knowing Casey Thompson's since that, uh, that freshman year of high school and Nebraska getting a good quarterback. You mentioned Dylan Gabriel from Central Florida now to Oklahoma. Where are things at with Chubb or Pretty? I ask that because Oklahoma has offered him Pretty, the Florida State portal quarterback, uh, supposed to visit Nebraska this weekend. Is Nebraska wants a second quarterback, uh, uh, a guy that can play after uh, Casey's uh, time expires, uh, the eligibility is gone. Where is Oklahoma at? Do they want to bring in a, another quarterback besides Gabriel? Is, is pretty, pretty a reality on their radar? Well, I mean, yes, they do because they wanted um, Casey. So, yes, they want a, uh, someone there to battle for the starting job. Uh, more than likely be the, the backup, be ready for injury, and mm-hmm. just be a, a, more than an emergency guy. Um, you know, uh, Lincoln Riley did not recruit a quarterback in the 2022 class. So he's going to take Caleb over there and uh, a multitude of others 
and leave Oklahoma's quarterback room. It, it, when he walked out, when he left the, the morning in uh, at dark after the Bedlam loss on a Saturday night, um, he had no quarterback, and the school was left with basically a barren room with a bunch of uh, walk-ons uh, and, and Caleb Williams. Um, so uh, I, Purdy is a guy I don't know a whole lot about, but you know he's been down there two years at Florida State, only gotten one start. Doesn't sound like a guy who's going to come in and wow anyone. Um, I imagine – I do know Oklahoma's looking at a couple of other kids – that they uh, uh, would probably prefer to get. That's the the question. As long as it's free agency, go pick your guy and, and have your guy pick you. Uh, and Dean, Dylan Gabriel, how does he grab you? Um, I like him. I like him uh, largely because Jeff Levy is the offensive coordinator, and um, Jeff had him two years mm-hmm. down at UCF um, as the coordinator, did great things. And then the kid was going to transfer when Levy was over at Mississippi. But um, as it turns out, you know, he had a broken collarbone. But he was going to transfer. And then the UCLA jumped into the thing. And Oklahoma was able to, Levy was able to bring him over. The familiarity is the by far the biggest thing going for him and Oklahoma. But the kid has some ability. I mean, he's been on Heisman lists. I've watched him play, watched him win games. Uh, coincidentally, he's a lefty and quarterback under head coach Josh Heupel, a lefty um, at UCF a couple of years. Josh, the last quarter lefty to win a national mm-hmm. championship here or win one here, period. Um, so he's, he's a really good player. He's a really good player. Not real big. Not real big. Oklahoma's been lucky and they've been uh, uh, safe from injuries with quarterbacks for several years now. He's the kind of guy that comes in with a broken collarbone in the past, and Levy's going to run him a lot. So I do worry about that. Mention the legs. I want to go back to Casey for a second. Should he ask you, ask you earlier? What what is the workload? What could it be like for Casey Thompson as a running quarterback? Oh, I think he can do you know whatever's needed. Um, he's a kid who takes care of his body incredibly well, um, and I know people that actually work with him and. Mm-hmm the condition he's in and, you know, and just the lifestyle and all that. So he's going to, he's going to be able to, to uh, take on whatever responsibilities there. I, Chris, I wish I could sit here and, and at least throw out two or three things that I would say, you know, you really got to watch out for like, with, like with the kid coming in at Oklahoma, mm-hmm. uh, Oklahoma wanted him over Casey, but you know what? This kid comes in with that broken collarbone. He's not as big. And there's several reasons that I would say I would take Casey over him. Well, that's, that's why, that's how much I think of, of this kid. Mm-hmm. Um, not going to go out and win every game. I don't want to completely, or I don't want to mislead anyone. Sure. Uh, but he's capable of doing everything that Scott Frost wants. And I don't know the personalities of the other players that, that Scott's worked with. Martinez seemed like a great guy. But Casey will be – he's kind of a coach's son, mm-hmm. and his temperament is, is so good. He's competitive yet graceful and has a charisma about him that will bring the players around him. And I, I, I really think that uh, – uh, this might save Scott Frost's job. Dean Blevins with us. News 9, Oklahoma City, the sports animal at Dean Blevins on Twitter. Dean, uh, a, a quick thought here. Do you expect the Caleb Williams announcement tonight that he's going to SC? Well, you know, just in knowing the kid, um, he's looking for the biggest splash, the biggest uh, news. Um, it might be that, that he kind of lets it dangle out there and let it be talked about. But it, it wouldn't surprise me uh, if he did announce it because of the magnitude of tonight. Um, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Um, you know, Lincoln Riley's been a, a close pal for a, for a long time. Um, and, uh, I was sorely disappointed with several things that were on the edge of, um, ethical or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the, the situation he left back in Norman, it was almost like, you know, guys, I want to wreck this thing the best I can. I know that was not his attitude. But he's put this program in an incredibly bad situation, even though they've recruited a top-10 class. They continue to lose four and five stars, mostly five stars. Lincoln's going to sign Mario Williams, the five-star receiver Oklahoma had out of Miami. you like this, Chris. 
he said a week ago, two weeks ago, he thought he would go back to, uh, he was going to move back to Florida, transfer out because he was homesick. Well, now, with Caleb looking for sure out there, he's headed west. He's homesick, going to California, living in Florida. Well, you know, maybe there's treatment in California. I don't know. Uh, Dean, <laughs> I thought, who's winning tonight, Georgia or Bama? Gosh, this is, a, this is the first question of that I've had today, and I hate to have to make the answer. I, I, I want to say Georgia so bad. But, but Bryce Young uh, mm-hmm. should be the difference maker again. Maybe not as substantially as before, uh, because uh, the people in Georgia tell me how they're going to go about putting pressure on him. That's their sole focus. They didn't get it last time. So I think it's going to be a very close game. But um, give me Bryce Young and Bama. I think you're right on. Dean Blevins with us. Dean, we'll talk soon. Thanks again for a few minutes. You bet, bud. Take care, Chris. <laughs> Like what you hear, high quality radio and podcast is part of what we do at Hale Varsity. Hey, it's Chris Schmidt with Hale Varsity Radio, and I wanted to offer listeners of the Hale Varsity Radio Show podcast $10 off the price of an annual subscription. That means that you, for less than $20, can get everything we produce 10 issues of our monthly magazine, our annual football yearbook, and all the premium content we produce at HaleVarsity.com. Just go to HaleVarsity.com backslash subscribe and enter in the promo code GBR for $10 off a full year of Hail Varsity. That's hailvarsity.com backslash subscribe promo code GBR. And we're back. Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio? On Hail Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes, that's awesome. Back into it, it's Hail Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Great stuff. From Dean Blevins, uh, Oklahoma insider, and uh, good thoughts on uh, what Nebraska has in Casey Thompson. So we have a a lot to get to here the final 20 minutes, uh, especially the natty tonight. Georgia and Bama can hear that here on many of our Hale Varsity affiliates with uh, ESPN's coverage following us. So check that out if you got a Go bump around and do errands. Uh, Junior has baseball tonight that gets done at 745. So I've been summoned to take Mama to dinner while he's at baseball. Uh, and then tomorrow we are on the road, single barrel, uh, road show, 4 to 6, uh, real red tip off ahead in Nebraska, Illinois. Coach Jeff Smith will be with me. We'll also check in with Mitch Sherman tomorrow. That's on the docket. But uh, pretty loaded today. Great stuff from Coach McBride on Saban. Uh, we spent time with Zach Wiegert about an hour ago, uh, just a few hours after his Hall of Fame induction to the College Football Hall of Fame. Greg Smith, remarkable. Let's dive in. So you have uh, Brett McMurphy, and you can be a fan of Brett or not, but he is still a pretty prominent voice in college football. He's with the Action Network. He has his way, way too early Top 25 out. Bama's one. Clemson's top five. Georgia's two. Ohio State's three. A&M four. Wisconsin comes in at six. OU at seven. Utah at 10. The U at 11. Irish at 12. Baylor. Penn State comes in at 14. They better. (laughs) Um, Oregon there. Tennessee. I mean, go down the list. LSU right there. Houston. Michigan's a top 20 program. Iowa's 21. And lo and behold, who comes in at number twenty-five? Don't say it. You you are you immediately went from a pretty happy kid, at least going okay. I only have fifteen minutes of Schmidt left. <laughs> uh, so, Will, your your eyes have always kind of given me that six thousand yard stare, like you're hiding in a tree and you're ready to pull the trigger on me. They you really... just have that look. I may have treated you like hell as a student teacher. It wasn't personal. No. Okay. I just got an A in that class. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't my grade book. <laughs> you did that on your own. Thank God. I did try and shake you down for money, though. <laughs> it's no lie. Nebraska comes in at number 25 in the country. Brad McMurphy, come on down. Wow. From Brett, too. That's impressive. <laughs> Nebraska, 3-9 and nine on the season. Recruiting class ranks 52nd. Conference rank 14th out of 14 in the Big Ten. And 
he gives the nod to Nebraska. He likes the Casey Thompson edition. I think he likes the fact you're – I'm all about running the football. But, brother, if you can short pass it to death or let an accurate guy find some of these targets deep, it's okay. And I've seen a lot of Kool-Aid gifts and memes and um, just, quite frankly, hilarity. The big red Kool-Aid guy. And I know Kool-Aid was invented in Nebraska. Yeah, right. But it, it's okay to drift towards, all right, this this could not suck. Yeah. I think I think we're all just kind of afraid to get excited. No, know? but, dude, you, you, we've all, if you're a Nebraska fan, you've gotten excited. Right. Because of Mickey, now you have Bill Bush in. You've got a quarterback. You... Uh, pray that the offensive line will get better and I think it can under Iola you got to find a running back or you got to develop one in your room Mm -hmm. once you get a running backs coach Mike Dawson's going to handle outside backers and defensive line with the addition of Bush Caleb Tanner says yep coming back for a fifth year that's big he's playing some of his best football and can make that jump after a year of starting with him and Garrett Nelson I don't know where your defense is going to be but I know they're going to give great effort and they're going to be coached well by Coach Chenander. Okay? That is that is a certain. Are they going to be 22 points a game good again? I don't know. But the offense needs to be better than 26 points a game. <laughs> All right? Or whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah, Brent McMurphy is diving in. Hmm. He is a red Kool-Aid guy. Well, we've seen it before. It's okay to be excited. Let's see how things go spring-wise. you got Big Teddy coming back at some point from his knee. Mm, Right. you got another couple of offensive line choices with Williams at guard. you got another guy that that could be in the mix this weekend. There's guys that have played football. And you're going to try and upgrade on the offensive line or coach up what you've recruited to get better. Maybe a different voice will be what the doctor ordered for Nebraska on the offensive line. Yo, Bourbon comes back healthy. Maybe you land this A and M kid. Maybe you uh, you you land uh, AJ Allen out of TCU. The the, the TCU commit uh, citizen is definitely an option that you're excited about. February signee. So there's there's possibilities. You've just needed. Fewer turnovers and less sucky special teams to be a seven-win or a six-win football team, or maybe beyond. Yeah. Was and, now, and now you have a quarterback right. potentially. Was Minnesota on that list? I did not see the Gophers. Okay. And w- w- the reason why is I think Minnesota Minnesota loses their entire offensive line, Oof. possibly four fifths of it. And I think t- Morgan said he's coming back, right? Tanner Morgan. I, I guess. I think he's yeah. And listen, the Gophers' defense was good. Hey, uh, there's a lot of football. I'm kind of surprised because Purdue showed me something without their studs mm-hmm. playing in the bowl game against yeah. Tennessee. They were supposed to get worked without uh, the Greek freak off the edge and, of course, Bell catching the football. Purdue is a nine-win football team with some guys returning. Yeah. And a lot of departures that weren't in the bowl game. And they still beat a, a decent to good, S, really good talent-wise SEC football team in Tennessee. Iowa is a mess at quarterback. They just are. And I think one of their era parents transferred to Kentucky. <laughs> Schedule-wise, I mean, it's, it's all right for Nebraska. You get... Oklahoma at home, you get Minnesota at home, your road schedule's Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa. I think they're going to probably flip Wisconsin and Purdue around, so you're at Purdue, and Wisconsin's not hosting you for a second straight year. Yeah, that'd be nice. So, that could work. Okay. Who are we feeling good about tonight? Are we going Bama or are we going Georgia? I'm going to let you... Think about that for a moment. We'll make our steak and a beer prediction here in about three minutes or so. NFL, man, I'm excited that Dallas and San Fran are going to touch gloves this weekend. It's cool that Big Ben got in for one more run. 
I was kind of hoping for a tie, and I hate ties last night just because I love watching Herbie throw the football, and I'm a Will Compton fan, so Mm -hmm. Will got into the postseason. That was some dynamic overtime last night, Uh, and I know you're a Donk fan, so you're moving on from from Big Vic. Yeah. And you're thinking of Elijah, I think. Oh, you're a gopher guy, or slash Viking. Yes, Vikings. I thought you've worn Denver gear before. Uh, I do have a hat. Not a fan. Okay. Okay. Because I see that, that old school, late 80s Denver. It's a fashion thing. Yeah, okay. you get it. Okay. You get it. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 a throwback uh, to LA. Yeah. But you don't like Denver. Like what you hear? High quality radio and podcasts are just part of what we do at Hale Varsity. I'm Brandon Vogel, managing editor. I wanted to offer listeners of the Hale Varsity radio show podcast $10 off the price of an annual subscription. That means that you, for less than $20, can get everything we do. 10 issues of our monthly magazine, our annual football yearbook, and all of the premium content we produce at HaleVarsity.com. Just go to HaleVarsity.com slash subscribe and enter the promo code GBR for $10 off a full year of Hale Varsity. That's HaleVarsity.com slash subscribe, promo code GBR. Miss us? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Bring it in for the real thing. We're on call for you. Catch the podcast at HailVarsity.com, the ESPN Lincoln app, or download them on iTunes. Saddle up, partner. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. Level of excitement out of 10 for tonight. It started out at like 3 out of 10. And then I'm like, well, it's college football. It is Bama. It is Georgia. I'm a, I'm at five now. Five out of ten. Just because you don't like seeing rematches. Yeah, right. And as, as much as we like ESPN, this is ESPN and the SEC working in unison to make sure this happened. These are two of the best four teams. Don't disagree right. with that. But this could have been played earlier. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like last weekend earlier uh, in Cincy and Michigan. Now, does Michigan still get rolled by Georgia? Probably. Does Michigan get rolled by Bama? Maybe. Does Cincinnati get uh, backhanded by both? Probably. You might have the two best college football teams, but if you're going to rank them, it's just funny how A&M's loss, or I should say A&M's win over Alabama doesn't sting Bama the way that caliber an eight and four loss stings other people. Yeah, my excitement. I don't know. I'm I'm with you. Maybe like a five. It'd be way We're up there. Watch it because it's college football. And I would. And my excitement would be a lot higher if I had some action on the game. You know, some money. But you know, here in Nebraska, don't you not, got a buddy that tends? Oh, wait, you're that guy. So you're taking the phone calls, Will. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, I haven't made that step because it would probably be a dangerous thing for me. It's okay. So, uh, yeah. That's fine. I, I know your limitations, right? That's right. Since Clint Eastwood. So you and I can do a steak and a beer. Okay. I right? like it. And uh, usually we do this with Elijah. That's okay. He is on the mend. Bless his soul. What are you going to do? Are you going to take Georgia? Are you going to take Alabama? I know who I want. I know what I want. But you got to kind of make the call. I'll take Georgia. All right. Yeah. Straight up. Or are we going spread? We're going to go spread because okay. if I can get points in Alabama, I'm going to. Fair enough. So Fair enough. So we're going to round it up to three. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Two and I'm a half? Cool with that. Okay. I, I, if, you, if you give me two and a half, I'll do that. No, I'm going to take the three. All right. All right. Worst case, we'll just have to do it again if it's a field goal ball game. So the preview says this. Georgia, and you heard Dean Blevins talk about it. Georgia's going to be going nuts trying to get after Bryce Young. He was so incredible. Uh, Nick Saban is always kind of handing it to his assistants. Uh, Kirby Smart is really good, fantastic at recruiting at a high level, has wonderful defense, uh, had a chance, and then Tua and Devontae Smith made him throw his visor the thing that I like about Bama, and you kind of question their run game, when push came to shove, they ran the football. When it's time to get down, 
they get physical on the line of scrimmage and go to work. Now, easier said than done against uh, Georgia because Alabama won with big plays in the passing game. This kind of comes down to quarterback play. Will Anderson will have a big game, I believe. And quite honestly, Nick Saban will have a counter for whatever Kirby's trying to do. Give me Bama 34, Georgia 28. I think it went 28-24, Georgia. All right, enjoy. Title game tonight with ESPN. A Huda Media Production.